And I think that uh, when we just discussed the fact that the caloric balance is really the bottom line, that these different diets are just uh, different ways to approach eating so that uh, people might find it tolerable to live in a hypocaloric state because it's really not a natural physiological state to be eating less calories than you're burning. And it, people have a really tough time staying with that. And uh, the, the ultimate, whether whatever the type of diet is, the ultimate deciding factor in its effectiveness is the uh, caloric balance. That being said, though, I think there's another sort of subcomponent that we want to think about. And it, it, it really uh, sort of touches on the third issue that you pointed out at the beginning, that is the role of muscle and, and metabolic regulation beyond just physical function, because I think that, well, the energy balance is the key thing. Realize that the the muscle protein is in a constant state of of turnover, meaning synthesis and breakdown is occurring constantly. And there's an energy cost of that turnover, which is about one third of the total resting energy expenditure. So that if you have a large muscle mass, large active muscle mass, the metabolic expenditure of that protein turnover is going to contribute to the energy uh, uh, use in the individual so that the energy balance will be helped not only by just the calories during exercise, but uh, just the fact that you have a larger muscle mass than the energy expenditure just related to the basal turnover of that protein will contribute to an energy expenditure side of the equation. So that within the context of, of diets that promote the use of either fat or carbohydrate, Really, the crucial factor is how much protein is in the diet that uh, gives a higher rate of protein turnover and energy expenditure in response to the meal intake, as well as maintaining a greater muscle mass, which will maintain a greater energy expenditure over time in the basal state and, and contribute to an energy balance over a long period of time. Um, when Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for talking about protein, because we're definitely going to do that. When you talk about dietary protein, do you think, and I have a handful of questions. Number one, how much protein do you recommend, do you think is necessary? Well, I've spent a lot of time uh, over the past several years with uh, uh, working with the FAO, WHO on uh, uh, quantifying protein quality. And I think that the question of how much protein should you eat is, is really a subtopic, and that is, that it makes a big difference what the type of protein is. And what we've been working on is developing and, and validating a system of, of evaluating protein quality that's dependent not only on the amount of protein you eat, but the specific nature of the protein, namely the profile and amount of essential amino acids in the protein, as well as how well it's digested. And, and uh, for example, we protein uh, is not a very high quality protein in the context of its uh, amino acid structure but it's uh, content, but it's not that bad. But then when you couple the fact that only 50% of it is digested as true uh, amino acid uh, absorption, then you can see that it is a very weak protein as compared to a high quality protein such as whey protein or milk protein that not only has a better profile of essential amino acids, but also is digested faster. So, so keep in mind when I say that the uh, the average intake of the uh, dietary protein is uh, the, the official recommendation is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram per day. But what people have forgotten about that recommendation is that that's of high quality protein, meaning that it's fully digested and has a profile of amino acids that is very beneficial. Uh, but in me- most circumstances, the uh, dietary intake of protein will be it would be beneficial to have a higher protein intake than that basal amount. The dietary requirement of protein or the RDA for protein is predicated on the amount of protein intake you need to avoid uh, avoid uh, deficiencies so that you you don't start losing hair and uh, having other p- p- problems of protein deficiency if you eat 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram per day. That's a very low level of protein intake. And in fact, when we look at it in comparison to the American diet, most people are eating well in excess of that and yet still benefit from increasing their dietary protein intake. So at a very conservative level, I think that there's a general consensus that as you get older, 
you need to eat a higher rate of a higher level of protein intake, at least 1.2 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram per day. If you're using, if you're in a very uh, uh, intense physical circumstance, such as exercise or military training or anything that really requires a lot of physical activity, it will it will be, it will be uh, beneficial to eat a higher protein intake as well. Uh, we did a very a pretty large study in weight loss showing that uh, to maintain muscle mass and weight loss that you have to have at least 1.2 grams a kilogram uh, per day of dietary protein, which when you multiply it out presents a big problem in age and obesity because if you weigh 35 or 40, uh, uh, if you weigh if you if you have a BMI of 35 or 40, you have so much body weight that the amount of protein necessary to uh, to maintain your muscle mass at 1.2 grams per kilogram per day will mean that it's almost impossible to lose weight because you're going to have so many calories just to meet protein requirements that you can't can't maintain your uh, uh, you can't uh, meet the caloric requirements of caloric restriction weight loss and that's one of the big dilemmas of caloric restriction weight loss diets is that you can't really eat enough protein to have a great success in maintaining muscle mass. And so the most common, almost all diets result in some degree of loss of muscle mass. And then that kind of works against you because as your muscle mass goes down, your basal metabolism goes down and your amount of calories you eat to balance your energy expenditure actually goes down over time. So so all of it is a cycle that... Uh, really is a difficult challenge and and that's where the specific dietary intake of certain proteins that are high in essential amino acids that have direct uh, anabolic effects is really an important factor. Let's say an individual is looking to lose weight. They uh, they're looking to lose weight. Their diet is higher in protein. Would it be difficult. So what is the way to say it? Basically, I'll just ask the, the question straight out. How difficult is it to gain weight on lean forms of dietary protein? Yeah, the loss of weight is very difficult to, uh, to accomplish without losing muscle as well. Uh, the biggest example and, and most controlled is bariatric surgery, where a uh, big study was done pulling data from many, many institutions. And uh, maybe several hundred people, and the average uh, muscle, my average loss of lean body mass was uh, something like 27 kilograms. So that it's really a challenge to lose weight without losing muscle mass. And the idea of doing it with a high protein diet is that you're going to uh, uh, reduce the rate of muscle loss, and and then that will have a lot of beneficial effects. And so it's the best you can do if you're going to try to lose weight with a diet. A high protein diet is clearly the best route to, to accomplish that with. That being said, it's a challenge because, as I said, when you have a high protein diet, that doesn't leave much room for the calories, the other calories that you tend to eat in your diet. So that's why things like the Atkins diet, you know, it's 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 you, if you eat that much protein, you get calories come along with it because of the content in food products. And it's 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 a real challenge, and I think that I think people are finding this that it's very difficult. It's not any newsflash. It's very difficult to sustain weight loss with caloric restriction because uh, you lose muscle mass, and as you lose muscle mass, your metabolic rate goes down. Mm-hmm.